So uh, welcome. Were those heights and weights right? Six two one ninety seven. Yeah, that's right. Ish? Okay, yeah, great. Right there. Uh, go right ahead, guys. <clears throat> Well, uh, Rick, congratulations, first of all. But um, what were kind of what was your immediate reaction um, when you were picked by the Reds? Well, thank you, guys. Um, no, I was I was surprised. I was shocked uh, once I got the call. I was super excited. I, I, I think I'm I'm super excited to come to Cincinnati, and I think it's a going to be a great fit and a nice young team. It's uh, it's going to be good. Hey, Rick, congratulations. This is uh, Mark Sheldon with MLB.com. Um, a couple of the stories I read when after you got picked was that he called you a late bloomer. What did that mean exactly to you? And being a late bloomer, quote unquote, how does it feel to be drafted as a, you know top ten draft pick and you know and be on your way to a pro career? Yeah, I guess you could call me a late bloomer. I wasn't very, I wasn't great in high school. I was just like an undersized kid. I'm still kind of small, um, but you know, I think I put on some weight and kind of came onto the scene later than some of my, some of my other peers, but, you know, I mean, just a testament to like some hard work that was put in and then the program that we had at wake and everything, you know, it's awesome. It's honored to, to be selected here. Were you overlooked in high school as far as out of the draft? Did you try to enter the draft and not get a lot of bites? Um, I was like, yeah, I was a super late commit to wake actually, uh, when like the last of my class. So I was kind of worried about just getting a college landing at college. And then I got a little buzz, not much at all, really. Um, and then it was a shortened, it was obviously like the shortened five round draft. So I kind of knew I had no shot at that point. Eric, congratulations. Um, kind of every scouting report says you like, you really know how to pitch and kind of, how did you develop that, uh, that skill and how important is that to you? Yeah, that's something I kind of relied on early. Like I said, I was a late bloomer. I didn't throw very hard in high school, um, but I always kind of got outs and I had to find ways to pitch. So um, I had to find ways to win and I didn't throw very hard. So, I, you know, it kind of came with learning to pitch, learning to like mix counts early on. And then once I did add a little bit of weight and velocity, um, that was still there too. So I, it was kind of, I just did it backwards. So some guys add the velocity first and then learn. And then I feel like I did it the other way. Anybody else? Rhett, can you just, looking back at that game against LSU, um, what was that like? And then knowing, you know, you go head-to-head -head with a guy who's one overall and you're seven overall. I mean, that's 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 pretty impressive. And what, what do you remember from that day? I mean, that was that was a crazy game. It was one of the most fun games I've ever been a part of. It probably would have been the most if we won. But, um, you know, it was an exciting day. I mean, any game of the College World Series you're going to be pumped up for, but that was a little bit extra. Um, and even the, like leading up to the game, like, everything I was kind of just dialed in, um, and and uh, didn't disappoint. I know schemes through through really well, and they came out on top. And you know, I think that was a good game for everyone that was watching. Uh, Red, how much have you been talking to Red's people, and what kind of things have they said to you about what they like about you, what they envision your your next steps, and so forth? Yeah, you know, it was kind of just a lot of recap of where I've come from through my career. You know, we talked, touched on it a little bit. Like they said, I was a late bloomer. They kind of, we kind of just like wanted to talk about the evolution of my career, learn more about me um, and how I am as a pitcher, uh, how my brain works a little bit, kind of just trying to pick what goes on up, up top. But, you know, there's a lot, we talked about where, what the future holds for me and like what I need to still work on. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still just, it's a lot of physical. I, I still feel like, I could put on some weight, put on some strength, but, you know, there's still a lot of stuff I've been working on and that I'll continue to work on with uh, the help of the Reds development system. Hey, right. You know, coming from a, uh, from a powerhouse, uh, you know, starting pitching, you know, pitching lineup with Wake Forest to a, to a younger uh, group with, uh, with the Reds, what are you sort of more excited about, uh, you know, sort of coming here eventually when you get to play with some of the guys that we have? Yeah, I'm super excited to join the the list of young guys that the, the team has. And, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to, you know, helping any way I can. Whether it's moving faster. And I'm really excited to get into the developmental system within professional baseball already. I know I came from a, a background of it already a little bit, but I, I feel like um, no matter how nice a, a Wake Forest pitching lab is, it's still we're taking that uh, next step into professional baseball. You can't beat it. So I'm excited um, just for the journey. Rhett, who's your advisor? Oh, uh, Andrew Lowenthal uh, with Wasserman. Livia? And I know you just talked about 
things you want to work on, but I have seen you described as pretty polished a lot on social media right now. So what part of your game are you most proud of or or can't wait to put on display as you make this next step to the league? Yeah, I feel like what I'm most proud of is just the command I have for all my pitches. I know that they'll um, – that's why most people think – that I'm polished and not much can get better, but I think um, shapes and everything can obviously always improve. And I, I know there's a lot of stuff. There's a million ways you can get better in this game. Um, so I know I have a lot of work cut out for me, but I, I'm pretty, uh, pretty proud of the command I have of the baseball and what I can do with it. Do you have any uh, former travel ball or high school or college, any former teammates or friends, you know, who are with the Reds organization? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think back. I, I, my mind's been racing. I'm going to have to think back, honestly. I don't think so off the top of my head, but I could just be overlooking someone, and I don't know. Um, I, I don't. I know he's quite a bit older than you. Well, not quite a bit, but, you know, relatively. <laughs> uh, do you know Stuart Fairchild at all? Or Oh, yeah, there it is. Guy. Stuart Fairchild. Uh, I do know Stuart Fairchild. I've only met him. I think I've only met him once. Um, but, yeah, no, Wake alum, that he gets a ton of respect. I think we wore the same jersey number at Wake, so – uh, that's a little cool thing. I think he was number four. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he was. Rhett, how much attention does your hair get when you perform on the mound? It gets a lot. It gets a lot. I think people are used to it now. I think uh, when I was coming upon the scene, it was something that people, it kind of just stuck out of people. But, you know, it does get, it grabs some attention for sure. So is our second baseman, so it's all good. Yeah, should be all, all good. Okay. Stewart was number four, by the way. How about that? I just looked it up. How about that? That was cool. Rhett, what was the moment like? I'm, I'm sure you've, you've thought about this moment for a while, what it was going to be like. You don't know what team you're going to, what organization. Uh, we saw the video of you getting to celebrate with your family. Can you kind of describe to us what that emotion was? I mean, it's it's hard to describe. It's, it's nothing like I pictured, um, and it was like a, the biggest weight off your shoulders and also the most excitement you'll ever have and just – it's so many emotions going into one, and it was amazing. It's hard to describe. Who are your favorite pitchers to watch? Uh, currently, yeah. there's a lot. You know, um, it's not like guys that I model my game after, but the guys that are just fun to watch. I I, I caught a Scherzer outing here recently when I was in New York, and he's super fun to watch um, compete. Uh, obviously, like Spencer Strider is super fun to watch. So just some of those guys, the Clips, uh, ACC guys, are, are always cool. Anybody else? Well, thank you, Brett. Thank you very, very much for your time. Enjoy your evening, and I'll yes, be sir. chatting with you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Rhett. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Rhett.